<laughs> Sorry. Uh, I cannot say bad words, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you can. In Italy, it's really important, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. <laughs>Um, yeah, as I was telling you, I'm from Turin, and Turin is this uh, little city, well, not that little city, um, in Piedmont, which literally means at the foot of the mountains, mm -hmm. and it's in a valley, so we have hills and mountains, and we can do a lot of things there. Um, we have beautiful museums about, we have the second museum in the world on, on ancient this, Egypt. Uh, after Egypt, you have the second, second oldest? Uh, the second biggest museum in the world. Uh, the, the first biggest. one is the Cairo Museum. Yeah. And the second one is uh, the Museo um, Egizio of Turin. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Already uh, new information for me. <laughs> And we also, we also the Olympic Games in 2006. 26. Yeah. And so we have a lot of intra infrastructure for winter games and ski and, um, you know, a lot of things. You can also go to the hills and uh, do some wine tasting. So it's a really beautiful city to live in. Yeah. Cool. So if you compare it with Innsbruck, is there a big difference between Innsbruck and Turin? Well, the size is the first thing that, came, that comes into my mind. Uh, Innsbruck is a little bit, um, yeah, it's more small than, smaller than, than Turin. But on the bright side, Innsbruck has a lot of bike lanes, so everybody here is cycling from one place to another. And so, yeah, this is one of them. That's funny, you probably don't know, but in my first podcast also, Nila, the girl from Czechia, she <laughs> mentioned the same thing. So. Well, it's so beautiful that you <laughs> here move from one place to another with, you know, 10 minutes uh, ride of a bike maximum. And yeah, and you have so many bike lanes. It's so, so beautiful. And well, you, the mountains are more nearer <laughs> than in Turin, yeah, you can. They can't be closer than here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and with 30 minutes walk, you are, you know, in the North Cape, so mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. And, well, mm, you are very um, um, interested in culture. So it seems to me that Innsbruck really breathes culture. In you can uh, see, um, museums and music, uh, music activities and art activities in every part of the city. Mm -hmm. So also Turin is a very active and cultural city, but um, maybe because Innsbruck is smaller, you can see it popping everywhere, you know, so many cultural activities and yeah, this place is beautiful and... Yeah, exactly, you already mentioned the place. <laughs> we are here at the old land house, mm -hmm. the entrance of the old land house and you already mentioned you have the second biggest museum <laughs> here it seems also like to be something like a museum but it's actually the entrance of the old land house and of the tyrolean parliament yeah pretty nice a lot of baroque and a lot of history together with italy yeah as habsburgo was long time also going until uh, south tyrol trentino and so on 
Well, I just wanted to mention that in Turin, there is the first parliament, the first Italian parliament. So there is another connection between this place and my hometown. So I just wanted to say that. Ah, cool. Um, okay. So another reason why that's the perfect place to have an interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Irene, Irene, can you give us a short input about Italy? When people are traveled there, mm -hmm. some differences between the regions and well, just what came, what is going to come, what is going to be in your mind at first. Um, okay, yeah, so as you know, uh, Italy is quite long, so uh, you can compare, you know, Piedmont with Calabria, for example, or Piedmont with Emilia Romagna. Uh, so we are very different from one city to another and from one region to another. We also speak uh, different dialects. Uh, mm -hmm. So, well, we all speak Italian, but every region has its own dialect. And when people are talking in dialect, we cannot understand each other. <laughs> oh, really, it's that extreme sometimes. Yeah, because ah. in the north of Italy, you have so many words that are similar to uh, French. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the south of Italy and you listen to old people <laughs> talking in their own dialect, it's quite impossible to understand them. Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> you definitely should know because your boyfriend is from the south, right? And yeah. you're from the north, so you have <laughs> definitely the best inputs to compare, yeah? Yeah, when, she, when his grandma is speaking, I, can, I cannot understand her, so it's very difficult. and I. I think that probably you cannot understand my grandma speaking in Piedmontese. So, yeah. <laughs> so okay, um, there are many differences from the north to the south and the, the middle of Italy. Uh, one thing that uh, it's like a fil rouge in, in all of Italy is the food, of course. So if you want to you know, have a real uh, experience of how Italy is, you have to try everything okay mm -hmm. so because i think that uh, with food um the culture of italy uh is has its uh, own um yeah. it comes from food okay so if you taste uh different meals and different things you can really understand the culture of, of the place you're visiting so for, true yeah, yeah. So, for example, in Piedmont, we have many um, meals based on meat or on cheese. Um, but if you go to other part of, maybe if you go on the south of Italy, uh, you see that many dishes are made with olive oil. While in the north of Italy, we use a lot of butter because we have more cows and we use butter in our recipes. Well, uh, if you want to make, you know, sweets in Calabria, for example, you use more olive oil than butter. So that's one difference. And yeah, so Italian culture is not a stereotype, but Italian culture passes through food. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I was often in Italy <laughs> and I was always falling in love after <laughs> one day with the Italian food. It doesn't matter where, in Puglia, in the south or in the north, in Milano, everywhere it's perfect. And also in Rome too. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the food of Italy. I guess everyone around the world loves Italian food. As we already spoke in advance, <laughs> there is in every single city a restaurant called after Italian city, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, not many after Turin, I, uh, I noticed, because maybe Turin is not so well renowned for um, food, maybe, but we have a lot of good sweets. Maybe this enjoy. podcast changed <laughs> after you described. Well, uh, yeah, let's go on. If you travel there, well, I always ask my guests about safety. Mm. What are you saying about safety in Italy? Well, we all know there is the famous mafia and things like that, but you don't meet them in your daily life, I guess, or how is it? Well, um, for example, I can speak about Turin because it's the city that, that I live in and I know the best. Um, it's quite safe to walk around Turin also by night, but uh, well, for a girl, it's better if you're accompanied by someone, uh, especially in some areas, but um, yeah, in the north of Italy, we don't feel the mafia so much 
maybe it's more uh, in the infrastructure in the politics that works. Uh, so uh, it's not maybe a matter of safety, uh, basic safety. Okay, you don't, I don't feel afraid of walking um, by the streets because there is mafia, <laughs> okay. Um, but this may be, be true for the north of Italy. I cannot speak for the south because yeah. it's a completely different situation. And I think it also depends on the region and on the single um, cities and towns. So um, I can safely say, safely say <laughs> that Italian cities are quite safe. But um, lately, um, newspapers and you know, also influencers um, have, have been raising this issue of uh, women's safety in, in street. So we have um, one of our major issues, it's catcalling, for example. Okay. So um, this awareness of uh, being safe, also women being safe, uh, walking by the streets is something that uh, it's gaining attention of so media attention because mm -hmm. uh, it's not that uh, uncommon to be cut cold and when you walk by the street alone or if you wear a skirt or something so it's quite safe but if you are a girl or a woman uh, it's not that uncommon that you are especially you know maybe by night, uh, you are cat cold or you are, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's generally quite safe. Yeah. Uh, about business chances, let's go back to business mm. chances. Okay. Uh, if you're an international guy and you want to make business or work in Italy, mm -hmm. would it be possible just in English? Okay, uh, tricky question. I think that it will be quite impossible because it's very important to know Italian. Uh, not so many people speaks, um, speak English. Uh, English is not one of our priorities. Um, so I think it will be difficult. Maybe um, in the north of Italy, you have more chances to start your own business and only by talking in English, but I think the language is a very strong barrier. Mm -hmm. So, That's also what I experienced yeah. here. Luckily, I'm able to speak a little bit Italian. Okay. That helps. And I have to say, you really appreciate if you try to speak a little bit Italian. Yes. And that makes you really sympathetic. So it's yes. easy to learn the language. Yeah. Because you don't part, that you don't complain if you make some mistakes. Yeah. You just help and yeah. appreciate that we try to speak Italian. Yeah. That's very cool. No, there are there are many people that talk Italian, that speak Italian. So we are always happy to hear someone that's trying to to you know to speak our language. So yeah, that's also <laughs> what I experienced. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. So let's go to traveling. If we speak about the north, what you can experience there, we all know Italia for the seaside and things like that. But there is much more, right? Yeah, uh, we talked about food, but Italy is very known for its culture. So uh, I love culture. So um, I will suggest you to visit the many museums we have. Um, also in Turin, we have you know many museums. Uh, you, if you go to Milan, you have so many things to visit. Also galleries, portrait galleries, etc. Uh, but uh, if you go to Veneto, okay, you can have this wine experiences. But we, we also have Venice, so mm -hmm. um, a lot of architecture and beautiful buildings to visit. And a lot of people. And a lot of people, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a major point. Um, well, um, what are you most interesting, interested about? Um, well, you already mentioned a lot of things like culture, you also have mountains in the north, so yeah. you're just third biggest uh, country of the Alps, so. Yeah. So, Mont, Mont Blanc, Monte Bianco is half on Italy, yeah. so you even have the highest mountain there. So. Yeah, in Valle d'Aosta, in Aosta Valle, yes. Um, yeah, yeah you, you, can do, you can really do many things from uh, cultural experiences to uh, trekking, because we have the mountains, so if you like to walk, etc., and explore a little bit, you, you can do it, you know, very easily. And yeah, wine tasting experiences is 
one of the major points of, of being in Piedmont, I think. Um, there are also some interesting, interesting uh, bike lanes, for example, um, in my countryside. I, my parents have this countryside house uh, mm -hmm. near Turin, and we have this long bike lane um, which connects many cities. So if you're interested also in riding uh, a bike and going somewhere, it's also possible to do that. So we are very open to sports and we are open to culture. Uh, yeah, cool. So we missed so far the capital, so let's speak a few sentences about Rome. Well, Rome is amazing. City. It's amazing, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, every time I go to Rome, I, it, feel, it feels like um, I'm a little girl in this giant um, toy store because it's so full of culture. Uh, we have ancient Romans uh, ruins so it feels like you are walking in the past it's so beautiful but you also uh, you can also experience baroque and baroque architecture and so Bernini and you know the fountains they the squares and the beautiful churches we have it's like walking through art when you are in Rome and Romans are so funny, so it's always beautiful to go to Rome for uh, the culture, for looking these amazing pieces of art in churches. I, I think that there are more churches than people in Rome. <laughs> it, I think it's fair to say that. Uh, Good comparison. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, sometimes I wonder uh, if I, uh, you know, where a uh, woman, a uh, woman in the uh, 17th century in Rome, what would I experience just being in Rome with this, you know, painters and, well, will be amazing, really amazing. So Rome is beautiful. You definitely have to go there if you... <laughs> I already okay. you made amazing advertisement. I love the emotions, how you speak about yeah. Rome and everything. So yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Rome well, is beautiful. Definitely and have to go there again. The food is amazing in Rome, you know. Carbonara, Amatriciana, amazing. <laughs> true, true. But what do you say about the price level? Like, also here we have the same thing. Italy is long, there's a big difference mm -hmm. between prices. So if you compare the prices, where is mm -hmm. it cheaper and where is it more expensive? And what would you say in European average is it? Well, I think the most expensive city is Milan. And yeah, and yeah, the north is more expensive than the south in average, I think. But in the last months, this difference um, has has been, you know, shortened. Yeah, yeah it's not that mm, Big we don't. Yeah, it's, no, yeah. it's also the south is more expensive now, right? Yeah, as, I've been in Puglia this. Um, this summer and the prices were quite the same as in Liguria yeah. or in Piedmont, so. Yeah, but we also have to mention that, especially in the peak seasons, the prices are yeah. higher. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Italians are well known that they change the prices <laughs> when there are more people here, so. Yeah, we are smart people. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't travel in the peak seasons, you can save a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's true. But yeah, uh, in general, the south of Italy, it's cheaper than the north of Italy uh, for, you know, for renting uh, apartments, etc. I think the worst city to, you know, rent an apartment is Milan. It's the worst one. Yeah, it's yeah. the worst one. Okay. Yeah, that are very, very expensive, but also maybe um, other student cities like Bologna or mm, I don't know. Which is really beautiful. Yeah, Bologna, Bologna is beautiful yeah. and also maybe Padova. Yeah, the student city or Pavia. Um, yeah, it can be more expensive than others due to the large presence of students. But also offers there. you more experience. <laughs> Sorry? But also offers more experience. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah, for students for sure. Yeah. yeah. Or for young people, yeah. not just for students. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They're quite open to everything. So the yeah. nightlife, it's also more. <laughs> also included, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's all inclusive, you know, well, in the price. Package. <laughs> full package. <laughs> In the Airbnb price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, um, what else? We had already the food, we had 
the wine, we had spoke about countryside, yeah. where your parents live. We spoke about Turin and other big cities. So, is there something else which you want to add? Do you have a hid hidden place what people definitely should know and can find on Google? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I was thinking about, it's not really a place, but an experience you can make. Um, we have these big benches in, in Piedmont, but I think that they are spreading around Italy. So uh, this designer decided to put big benches, big colored benches, but they are really huge. And you can enjoy the view from these benches. And they are originally, they were placed in beautiful sites in, uh, in the Lange, so in Piedmont again. And you can enjoy the view of vineyards, or uh, yes, and they are very beautiful and they are a useful tool also for little shops because um, there is this passport, so this bench passport, and you get, um, what is it, how is it called? Stamps. Stamp, right? For every bench you, you visit. So it's an occasion also to visit new places because mm -hmm. they are a place in these small cities in the, uh, in the Piedmont region, so you can both enjoy the visit and maybe have wine tasting experiences or also visit beautiful churches and um, have lunch in beautiful places. So I will suggest this experience because you have your passport with all of the stamps of the benches you visited and they are really beautiful and placed in these amazing places. And you can, you know, visit a lot of cities with this escamotage. Cool. <laughs> so I will suggest that. Yeah. What was the name again? Uh, I think it's called the Big Bench or Big Benches Project. Big Benches Project. Yeah, and there are huge benches and colored benches and they are placed in very beautiful spots. Cool, and with the stamps you get a lot of memory which, yeah. always, which will always remember you about this trip. Yeah, so I will suggest that. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully I can do that once. Yeah, I will recommend it. <laughs> Well, Irene, in the end, yeah. there, I always ask my guests about some phrases in their mm -hmm. own languages. So, can you tell us some phrases in Italian which are important if you travel there or if you just visit Italy? Uh, okay, the first one, uh, where is the bathroom? I think <laughs> it's important to ask everywhere you go. So, dove il bagno? Dove il bagno? Or, is there a bathroom? C'è il bagno? Because it's yeah. always important to check it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I try to repeat it and please correct me if oh, I'm okay, wrong. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we can do it again if you want. Okay. No, it's pretty fun. <laughs> okay, so apart from that, we can start from the basics. So if you want to say hello, how are you? You can say ciao, come stai? Or come va? Depending on where you are. Ciao, come stai? Or come va? Super! Well, you're ready. <laughs> Quite ready sure. to visit Italy. <laughs> And yeah, it's actually not fair because I know a little bit of Italian. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I struggled more with Czech or Sl Slovakian language okay, or so. Lebanese. Yeah. So Italian is easier part. <laughs> and if you want to um, greet somebody when you leave, uh, oh, thank you. Is, of course, it's very important. Grazie. 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 And also, you're welcome. Prego. Well, prego. <laughs> Sure. Um, <laughs> what a nice language. <laughs> <laughs> and good morning. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. And if you want to say goodbye, you say arrivederci. Arrivederci. Super. <laughs> Nicely done. Well, uh, well, in the end, I would say molto grazie e arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> cool. Cool. Bye. Bye. Don't believe tourists. We ask the locals.